Uh, the past few days have seen an awful lot of activity. It's very difficult to uh, account for each little change that's happened. I'm sure you're all aware of the different locations of events that keep popping up. Uh, I'll just give a little quick update and show you uh, an interesting map, I think. Uh, the update here, this view is uh, looking uh, toward the south, uh, southeast, across the Fisher system, and the geothermal plant uh, here off to the lower right. So this is the uh, Fisher complex, and the uh, flows uh, I should say that the Fisher activity picked up a couple of days ago, and that's pretty obvious to everybody here because of the additional lava that's on the surface. And with that much more lava on the surface, it's able to pour across the ground and it has reached the ocean. And depending on which vent is active and producing most of the flow, uh, the lava flows will create a new path, they've, they've spread apart, they've merged, and then they've spread apart again. Uh, yesterday, there were two ocean entries. Uh, later in the day, there was only one. All day today, there was only one ocean entry that's marked by the steam plume in the background. It's a little hard. Uh, I've stopped trying to track all of the numbered vents. So if you find yourself a little confused to buy them all, uh, I certainly do as well. I have to kind of put my own labels on the photographs. So these are the numbered vents that you hear people talking about. Uh, the most productive vent so far is uh, number 22. It is the one right here. It's generating most of the lava and it's created this lava flow that winds its way down here, it winds over there and then back down to the ocean. Uh, earlier this morning, there was some additional activity uh, over here at Fisher number 6 and 15, they're, all, they're very tightly close together. So there was an additional little lava flow that started to head toward the south uh, from there. Uh, Fisher uh, 17 here marks the uh, lowermost fissure of this entire system. And uh, that fissure is uh, just producing a little bit of spatter uh, now and then. And it represents probably the downrift most part of the intrusion of magma that's below ground. We have no evidence that the magma has moved further downrift than that in terms of the earthquake locations of the past uh, several days to a week. And all of the deformation uh, patterns around that part of the rift zone are pretty stable. They're not indicating that the magma has moved itself further down rift and forced the rift apart. Uh, this is just a view from uh, over the ocean looking at the uh, ocean entry this morning. There's only one lava channel that makes its way up actually down to the uh, ocean. And when the lava enters the ocean, it boils seawater. And what you're left with is a hydrochloric acid plume with lots of little particles in it. It's very uh, corrosive. It's kind of like uh, acidity of uh, lemon juice or a weak battery acid. It's not very good to be underneath that plume. So this is a map. It's a little hard to read. It's a little washed out, I realize. But uh, I wanted to point out um, something that you've heard about in the news and we've tried to talk about, and that is the changing chemistry of the lava that's being erupted from the East Rift Zone. And this map, I'll uh, explain just a little bit here. So here's uh, Kapoho Crater, Green Mountain. Uh, here's the lava flow path from 22. Down here, you can see where it uh, splits, then comes back together and uh, enters the ocean. I mentioned uh, activity around uh, Fisher 5 and 16 that generated a small lava flow today. As of this morning, it had spread to this distance. Uh, later in the afternoon, some fissures became active again in the middle of Leilani Estates. So like I said, it's very hard to track all of these uh, different fissures that have become active. But one thing is clear is that more magma is coming to the surface now than, than earlier in the eruption sequence. 
Okay, so these things I wanted to point out are these different green colors. Uh, the green colors, the red colors, and this little blue one. So each of those dots represent one of the fissures. And the green color represents the type of lava that we think was stored in the rift zone for decades before it came out and erupted at the surface. That lava presumably was forced up to the surface as magma moved down the east rift zone, pushed its way into the lower east rift zone, and forced that magma to the surface. Then, starting on around uh, fissure uh, 16, I think it is, uh, the lavas here, shown in the red, began showing a definite uh, mixture of lava stored in the rift zone for decades and the lava or magma that originated in the upper part of the east rift zone beneath Pu'uo'o and perhaps even the summit. So what we're uh, observing now, the more voluminous activity, the more fluid lava flows, is the arrival of the hotter, uh, less viscous, more fluid lavas that originated further up into the rift zone. So now we're seeing the fresh stuff come up to the surface. And so as we suggested before, when that happened, we could see additional fissures form, more voluminous lava flows, and where they flow depends on where the vents actually located. So far, essentially uh, all, most of the lavas had flowed away from PGV, away from Highway 132 to the south, uh, and into the ocean. And my final slide, I uh, showed this uh, a week or so ago. This is a giant cutaway of the volcano, just to help visualize what I just described. So this is the uh, summit of the volcano, where Hale Mau Mau is, and is the source of the explosive eruptions that you've read about and heard about. And this is a cutaway right through the east rift zone. Here's, say, the location of Pu'uo'o. And uh, this orange uh, pipe is meant to locate the conduit that existed from the summit to Pu'uo'o, but then on April 30th began moving down the rift zone and brought magma down into the lower east rift zone. So initially, the lava originated, the magma originated from here. It continued to move down into this location here. And then on about May 1st, the summit of the volcano begins subsiding as a reflection of magma now moving out of the summit reservoir uh, into the rift zone and further down into the lower east rift zone. So in a sense, there's an open conduit from the summit to the lower east rift zone. And my final comment is that for the 35 years or so that Pu'uo'o was active, there was a kind of balance between the summit reservoir and the location or elevation where Pu'uo'o erupted. There was sort of a symbiotic relationship with the summit and Pu'uo'o. Well now, that vent, the new vent system is located almost at sea level. So the whole system has to adjust to some sort of new balance, and until that balance is reached or something else changes, we expect magma to continue moving from the summit reservoir into the rift zone and further down into the lower east rift zone. So that suggests that we're in it for the long haul. We don't know how long this eruption is going to last, but for now, uh, it looks like it's just going to continue, uh, and we take it day by day. Thank you.